just like a powerful let's hold that vision really what a beautiful thing so thank you for um allowing amelia to read the daily word for us that was really special all right so how many of you are expecting a joke from me today <laughs> we're going to talk about expectations today <laughs> and i did have a joke for you this morning and i was expecting it to be funny and I was expecting it to land, and it didn't. <laughs> and so that joke is gone. <laughs> but I am going to, you know, it was like um, being able to sort of live the teachings in the moment, right? Which is, you know, um, what I want to share with you today is about how we can have healthy and unhealthy expectations in our life. Because the reality is, is that if you um, think about it, you might agree, we're always having expectations, are we not? When you moved in, when you came into this room, I'm sure that you were expecting to see certain people. You were expecting to hear some wonderful music. You were expecting to be inspired in some way or another, right? Like there's these expectations that we have wherever we go. Some of them will be met today and some of them may not be. And how do we live with that, right? How do we live with knowing that we can have expectations and when they are not met, that it doesn't have to mean anything other than an expectation wasn't met. That it doesn't have to um, uh, change or shift the way in which we know ourselves to be expressions of God, to be um, holy, to be worthy of love and of belonging, as Brene Brown really talks about when it comes to the power of vulnerability, and how when we have expectations that they themselves, the expectations themselves and our experience of them can actually bring about some clarity about what it is that we're holding in mind, what it is that we're holding um, about ourselves and about God and about how life should be. I mean, just take a moment to think about the expectations that you have about life, expectations that you have about relationships at work, this very moment, what are you expecting from this very moment? What are you expecting from what I'm going to be sharing with you? We're constantly creating expectations, and some of them we are conscious of, and some of them we're not conscious of until all of a sudden they're not met, right? And then we start to feel the results of having an expectation not be met. And a lot of times um, that is really moving us into, as Brene Brown uh, talks about in her book, The Atlas of the Heart, which again is the one that we are using for our not only Sunday series, but for the Spirit Groups program, which you can still sign up for and be a part of. But she talks about when expectations are not met, that a lot of us tend to go to disappointment, yes. Anger, yes. It goes to frustration, discouragement. How many of us, you know, have had an expectation not be met, and so we just say, you know what, I'm just not going to expect anything from them, or I'm not going to expect anything from that thing that we're talking about, whatever that may be, right? And so expectations just play with us. Now, one of the expectations that I think we could, it could do a lot of good for us to use and really sort of like have our, ourselves grounded with is the expectation of expecting the unexpected, because how many, how many of us know that there will be unexpected surprises in life? How many of us forget that when there is an unexpected surprise in life, right? And so, so, you know, how can we be more grounded in expecting the unexpected, in being able to hold expectations? Because it's not about, like, letting them, I, I don't, for me, it's not about, like, getting upset with myself or having expectations. Is how to have them in a healthy way and being able to manage my experience of the expectations, whether they're met or not. Right? Because it's just something that sort of is part of like the human experience. But really, when they're not met, if we have an unhealthy relationship with it, or whether we um, may not even know that the expectation is there, when we start to feel that disappointment, regret, frustration, uh, misunderstanding, feeling not understood, how does that make us feel? Small. That's my experience. Constricted. Limited. But are we not the makers of our own experience? Are we not the ones that have the power to set intentions about how we are going to experience and live 
through those expectations and through life. And so, yes, we can have expectations and we can set the intention of not letting when those expectations are not met mean anything more than they were just not met. That we don't take it on as something about that there's something wrong with us or there's something wrong with who we are. That it says anything about how we are valuing ourselves and what value and worthiness there is within us. And so when we think about like, well, maybe I can have a healthier relationship with expectations and set that intention for um, uh, creating a different way of experiencing, what could it be? Well, for me and in the book from Brene Brown, it really invites us to create an intention of curiosity. So when expectations are not met, huh, I wonder why that didn't happen, huh? I wonder what that means for me. Huh, I wonder what it's pointing out for me. And the same thing with, you know, with the expectations. I really believe that curiosity and um, coming from a place of curiosity and many different aspects can really support us in managing and navigating life no matter what life may look like for us. And so today, really, it's about um, having curiosity about our expectations. What are those expectations that we're having? To know where they're coming from right? Like what birthed these expectations? Also, um, curiosity about our own experiences. Ah, oh, this is an experience I'm having. And just trying to be curious about what it actually means and how it actually feels and how it's uh, bringing us into our own evolution. And also curiosity about how God is showing up in our lives. Like in moments where our expectations are not met or in moments when we are in despair or anger or frustration, what would it look like if we actually were able to take a step back? It's like, huh, I'm curious about how this is an expression of the divine. I'm curious to see how God will be showing up through this experience. All of a sudden, I mean, even just that one question, right? Like moves our attention away from the challenge, the issue into the possibility, the potential that is in that moment. And so we do have these unexamined and examined expectations and there's an opportunity for us to no longer allow when they're not met to deter us from moving forward and actually be able to even see them as the catalyst for us moving forward and evolving and getting more clear about who we are what god is and the way in which we together are moving through life but so many of us all of a sudden when expectations are not met and we go into all of those feelings we just push things away Brene Brown in her book says, there are too many people in the world today who decide to live disappointed rather than risk feeling disappointed. Because we're not vulnerable enough to see it, right? We're not vulnerable enough sometimes to just know that it's a feeling that we're having and it doesn't define us. And so we get into, you know, when things are disappointing and whoa, this is, you know, woe is me, life is too hard. No one can live up to what I want in life. No one can, you know, all these different stories that we have. What would it look like if we just go into life knowing sometimes we'll be disappointed and sometimes we won't be disappointed. Sometimes our expectations are going to be met and sometimes our expectations are not going to be met. And regardless of that, I move forward. Regardless of that, God is here. Regardless of that, I can hold and have my being in faith. And so we can have healthy expectations because knowing that there are things that will be met and not, uh, things that will be unmet can still allow us to move forward and not deter us from remembering our worth, remembering what God is, and remember the way in which life itself is shaping us and moving us into a greater experience of God. So many times when all of a sudden we push away um, because it's difficult to be vulnerable, to speak out our expectations, to live knowing that there may be some individuals that may not meet our expectations or experiences that may not meet our experience, um, expectations, we play it safe. So we don't give ourselves fully to a relationship. We don't give ourselves fully to an experience. We don't give ourselves fully to that which we say we want in life. And all of a sudden we start stopped reaching out to people and also reaching out for our dreams and aspirations. But we can choose to see that every individual and every experience is moving us forward and deeper into God. And so when all of a sudden we do recognize, well, or maybe we don't even recognize, but I'm just going to invite you. When you go into a relationship, when you go into a new experience, when you show up somewhere, to ask yourself, 
What expectation do I have of this moment? Brene Brown in her book has a couple of questions. So what expectations do we have, do I have going into this? What do I want to happen through this? Why? What does that mean for me? And believe me, we can always go deeper into our expectations because we are constantly, if you're like me, having a movie being played in our mind, right? And so, yeah, we show up to an experience, but we've already shown up with a movie playing about what that experience is going to look like, feel like, what's going to happen. And there are so many movies that are taking place within us, and sometimes we don't realize it. But the moment that we realize it, the moment that we know that those movies are just part of the experience and the expectations are just part of the experience, there's a healthy way in which we can all of a sudden recognize, oh, it's a movie, so I can rewrite the script. I can choose to be with it differently. And be curious then about our expectations so that we can always learn, whether they're met or not, that God is within the situation, that God is in that moment. We can so get lost in the movies in our heads that we forget that that's not the reality of our experience. And so again, how can we be curious about what is um, being born within every experience, within every exper uh, relationship, what is taking place and how is it moving me forward and deeper into the experience of God. Proverbs uh, verse 19, uh, uh, chapter 19, verse 21 says, the human mind may devise many plans, but it is the purpose of the Christ that will be established. And so we can have many movies playing in our mind. We can have many an expectation. And what will take place is that which is of God. What will take place is that which is our own divinity showing up. What will take place is what will all of a sudden uncover that which we have used to cover up the truth of our being. And so even when there is disappointment, even when somebody doesn't meet our needs, we can be in the knowing, wait, this is for my highest good. Because it is through this that I will know myself more fully. And it is through this that I will recognize the way in which God shapes my life in deep, deep and big ways in the expected and in the unexpected, God is, period. Can we live that truth? In the expected and in the unexpected, God simply is. When our needs are met, when our needs are not met, when my expectations are met, when they're not met, God still is there. And a lot of times we set ourselves up for disappointment. That's another thing that um, we really are invited into this week to look at how we set ourselves up with some of the expectations um, towards disappointment. So yes, we can have them and we can still question them, right? And we can still be healthy with them. She, I love that Brene Brown actually gives a couple of examples on how we sometimes set ourselves up for these disappointments. She says, for example, that one time she was saying, it's gonna be a great vacation. I have everything planned to the minute. How many planners are in the room? How many of you planners know that there are things that are unplanned that will take place? And what happens when we don't, right? And so we're already building ourselves up with these expectations, knowing that there can be some disappointment. And so, yes, we can have a healthy relationship with it. And we can also question the expectations and start to um, uh, see what's underneath it. And so, for example, it's going to be a great holiday. Um, you know, I have everything planned. What would it look like to go into that same experience, but with a sense of curiosity? I'm not even asking that we not plan, but can we go in with a plan and ask, I wonder if we're going to be able to do all the things that we're going to do. I wonder how happy and joyous this experience is going to be. And again, it starts to shift our mind about the way that things have to be and the potential and the possibility of what will rise up. She also says, my sister-in-law is going to love her gift and be so impressed with dinner. How about, I wonder if she's going to love it. How many of you are good cooks in this room? I'm not. So I would never go in with the expectation of, some, of saying, they're going to love my, 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 my dinner, right? They're going to love the food. But what would it be like? I wonder if I'll be able to cook today. I wonder if it'll actually taste good. I wonder if they'll enjoy it, right? And so it's that curiosity and openness to wondering that really starts to make the experience a little differently for us. He, she also says, I can't wait to share my project presentation with the team tomorrow. They're going to be blown away and really appreciate how hard I've worked. 
I wonder what they'll think. I wonder how it'll show up. And when you start to ask yourself, where do these expectations come from, right? When you start to um, look at how they're kind of like shaping up for you, a lot of times it's going to remind us that a lot of these ex expectations, and especially when we are disappointed when they're not met, it's why. Because we have given a lot of power to other individuals. We have given a lot of power to our experience. We have given a lot of power to that which is outside of us. And the moment we do that, we lose the power that is truly powerful, which is to know that we are worthy, that we are whole, that our value comes from us and how we show up and how we believe and connect with the divinity that is within us. Gary Simmons um, shares with that in the moment when we all of a sudden realize that we, our value comes from being one with God, that our value comes from not outside of us, but inside of us, that we can release the expectations that something outside of us will define our worth, that all of a sudden when we do that, then things no longer have to be villains in our story. Because the moment that we're disappointed, the moment that we don't think we're being valued, because we're not valuing ourselves, the moment that we think other people are saying that or making us feel that we are unworthy, which is simply um, uh, hitting a nerve because there are parts in us that we don't feel we are worthy of, well, all of a sudden we have to make somebody a villain, right? Somebody the bad person or something the bad person in the story. And in God, there is no villain. In God, as Gary says, no one and nothing is against you. And then he invites us to do something really powerful. Make your path to be about proving this truth. And you will discover what wholeness really is. How about that as an expectation? That no one and nothing is against me. And to start seeing how that is shaping up. Again, it's not about not having expectations. It's about having healthy expectations and having a um, healthy relationship with our expectations. So even when things do not go according to our plan, there is something here for me. Even when this person doesn't show up the way that I thought that they would or I wanted to, there is something here for me. And it's all moving us in the direction of our own divine energy and the place of knowing who we are. Why did this happen? You know, so many times um, we get asked, and you probably have asked yourself, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Sometimes I don't know the answer to a why something happened, why an expectation wasn't met. But I think even more powerfully, the question is, what can I do with it? What can I do with it now? And that, again, is being in the curiosity and in the wonder of the experience. But I know that it takes a certain level of trust and faith for us to be able to do that, that a faith that we are one with God, that God is the source of our good, that God is showing up and manifesting in our lives, whether we recognize it or not. And that we have within us the power to really shift our experience with the intentions that we set for ourselves to seeing, to uh, feeling, and to believing in God in all. We can have expectations and we can have a strong foundation of where we are placing our faith. E. Cummings says, once we believe in ourselves, we can risk curiosity, wonder, spontaneous delight, or any experience that reveals the human experience. See, for me, this is all about just knowing ourselves and being vulnerable enough to do the work of knowing ourselves more fully, to seek to know ourselves. All the things that we have pushed to the side but are still a part of us and all the things that we have welcomed in and that they're a part of us. To be vulnerable enough to know how we are showing up in the world, how we're expecting the world to show up for us and uh, to be vulnerable enough to like sit with the feelings and the uncomfortability sometimes of recognizing it may not feel good and that doesn't mean that God is not in it. It may not be experienced as good and that doesn't mean that there's no good in it. And so in that way, we start to realize that, one, everything is of God, that everything is for our highest good, and that everything is part of the evolution for us to start living more authentically as the divine expressions of good that we are. And it reminds us then that we don't have to look outside of us um, to look for perfection, because what? Perfection is already here. Perfection is God as us living in this world. We don't have to look outside of us to expect to find our worth 
outside of us because we are already worthy and we are already worthy of belonging and living into our truth. And we don't have to go out and see God outside of us because God is already here. Whether we acknowledge it or not, whether it feels right or it doesn't feel right, whether our expectations have been met or not, God simply is here and God is part of this experience also. As Meher Baba said, he's a spiritual master of the 20th century, um, known in India, but also beyond, and many people considered him an avatar. He says, why is it so difficult to find God? Because you're looking for something you've never lost. God is already here in expected and unexpected ways, and when our expectations are met or not, and that is an expectation that we can have to experience. That is an intention that we can place to bring about awe, wonder, curiosity. And then through that, an experience of joy and oneness and of our own power. That is truly not only the expectation, but the curiosity that brings about heaven on earth. And so I really invite you to look at that. And I really invite you to experience God in awe. Namaste. Thank you so much for visiting our YouTube channel. We post new videos every week to keep you positive, present, and inspired to your divinity. Please click on the subscribe button below and also that notification bell. Remember to share this with your friends and your family. Those that you know will be inspired just like you have been. And always remember that we love you, that we bless you, that we behold the Christ in you, and we see you doing great things. Thanks and take care.